to the outside, I think there's some confusion as to how a province which votes so overwhelmingly conservative, uh, uh, particularly at the federal level, could uh, end up electing two quote unquote progressive, or as we would call them, left wing mayors. Yep. Uh, but the, the fact is, though, there's a few factors. First of all, uh, I think that conservatives have really ignored municipal politics in Alberta. Yes. We have virtually no infrastructure. We don't have a pool of activists. We don't uh, have the same policy generation that the left does. We, you know, too often conservatives on city council think their job is saying no. And I think a lot of the time, by the way, their job is to say no. Sure. But <laughs> if they're saying no, then they have to be able to say what the alternative is. So if you don't like what's being proposed by the progressives, by the leftists, by the unions, well, what's your alternative? So what's your alternative for downtown revitalization? What's your, you know, here in Calgary, a major issue. What's your alternative for growing the economy if it isn't big government? And, and I don't know where those ideas are or where they're going to come from, but it was a pretty, it was pretty clear during the campaign that conservatives didn't have the same level of policy as, as the left did. And then there's money. And I think money is going to become a big story coming out of this election. As, as I'm sure you know, uh, the rules governing funding for candidates changed between the last election and this one in municipal politics. Unions and corporations were no longer allowed to give money directly to candidates, but they could give it to third party advertisers or as they're more commonly called PACs. And in the case of the unions in Calgary, those PACs raised millions of dollars. And while we won't know for a few months and how much they ended up spending, I wouldn't be surprised if they spent in excess of $3 million electing leftist candidates. You know, it is, it's, it's shocking. And, you know, in particular with um, Calgary, one of the things that you have been banging the drum on for so long is the pension catastrophe um, and public sector compensation problems in Calgary, I think it's just going to get worse. And I fear for everybody's tax bills in Calgary. Uh, I wouldn't just say Calgary. I think Edmonton is going to be in the same situation where mm -hmm. you've elected a majority council and it's not even close. I, you know, as we said, in, in Calgary, it's 10 votes for the left and five on the right. Uh, maybe even 11 of four when it all shakes out. But they're going to be voting for higher salaries. They're going to be voting for better benefits. They're going to be voting for more generous pensions. They always think bigger government is better. So they're going to add people to the ranks of the civil service, to the bureaucracy. And that puts us on the hook for even more uh, pensions and benefits and, and high salaries. So I think both of these cities are headed in a very dangerous direction. And we don't have elected officials who recognize that it's become unsustainable for the tax base of either of those cities to keep going. And so uh, since they're not going to cut costs, that means they're going to have to hike taxes. You know, as long as you've been coming on my show, you and I have said that conservatives walked off the field basically of municipal politics a long time ago. And really, it's the one you know, system of government that affects you first and often the most. It's that one big tax bill that you actually have to physically write out and give it to somebody when you're paying your municipal taxes. And then for, you know, for cultural conservatives, even SOCONs, you know, for people who are worried about fighting the culture war, they get involved in fighting the culture war after the battle is lost when they get that critical race theory piece of paper home from the school and you're like what the heck are they teaching my kids at school well you should have been involved at the school board trustee level but we just don't do it and this is a criticism of big conservatism too is that they are not um, helping to organize. We focus on provincial politics, we focus on federal politics, but there's no real organization infrastructure and money um, going to develop those conservative leaders of tomorrow. No, uh, you're, you're absolutely right, Sheila. And and the fact that this isn't a bigger news story for conservatives is, is really uh, appalling. And yeah, you know, when I went to vote, I always vote. I think you're not allowed, you know, that's the old joke. You're not allowed to complain if you don't, if you don't mm -hmm. vote. I walked into my ballot booth and having done my research, there wasn't a candidate I could vote for for school board where I mm -hmm. live because out of the five people running, 
none of them represented the policies and values that I had when it came to public education. It was a very depressing moment when I was like, there isn't someone I can support. Surely in a city of 1.5 million, we could have found a person to put their name on the ballot, to stand up for getting rid of you know, discovery learning, for supporting the, the great new curriculum that the government has put together, uh, really focusing on educating children as opposed to uh, the the woke the woke trends that seem to be infecting education. And there's going to be real consequences for yeah. businesses and for others. Jody Gondek, our mayor elect, she's been mayor elect for 16 hours, something like that at this moment. And she just did an interview where we was asked, what is your first priority as mayor? And she said, it's going to be to declare a climate emergency for Calgary. Her oh. very first priority is there. Not staggering unemployment in this city, not the fact that too many people can't find affordable housing. The not vacant the downtown. Third of our downtown office towers are remaining vacant. The first priority for her as mayor is to declare a climate emergency. This is a nightmare. I, I mean, it is a nightmare. You know what that means to me? Bike lanes and expensive recycling programs that don't actually work. That's what that means to me at the municipal level. Yeah, uh, bike lanes, uh, maybe further speed limit reductions. Calgary already dropped their speed limits from 50 to 40, but uh, climate people have urged for 30, uh, getting rid of more parking through downtown, uh, limiting how many single family houses can be built in favor of high rises because they're less carbon intensive. Uh, there are so many policies that just get passed in the name of things like, say, climate change, which will truly affect the quality of life for everyday Calgarians. But they didn't get talked about because there were so few people on the right, the conservative side, making the argument about how this election was going to have an impact on how you led your day to day life. And, uh, you know, even the few people we had making that case were outgunned at every opportunity by by the unions and by the progressives who spent an astronomical amount of money and poured an unbelievable amount of labor into this election. If you'd like to get access to my show as well as other great TV style shows too, like Ezra's nightly Ezra Levant show and David Menzies' Friday night show, Rebel Roundup, just go to rebelnews.com slash subscribe. That's rebelnews.com slash subscribe.